I'm going to show you how to swap your drive out in your Lenovo Legion Go 2. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can either clone the original SSD, which we'll be doing in this video, or you can use Lenovo's recovery image on a USB, which I'll also walk you through as well. Now to prepare you, we will be fully removing the battery and the fan Whilst it is a little bit fiddly, I actually personally like the fact that, that this is a little bit more fiddly because the fan actually has a built-in heatsink which is going to make your SSDs run a lot cooler. So in the long run, this is more beneficial even though this is a little bit more fiddly than other handhelds to swap the drive out. Now we will be referring to tools and other bits and pieces that I'll be referring to in this video. I've linked everything that I'll be using today in this video down in the description, so check them out. Yes, there are affiliate links, but none of this is sponsored. I've bought all of this stuff myself. So things you will need, you will need a decent quality driver set because we don't want to be rounding off any screws. You will also need a, a quite a long, thin driver for two of the screws as well. You will need spudgers and decent quality ones at that. You'll obviously need a new drive. So you just wanna go for a 2280 sized drive. These are cheaper and faster. Make sure you get a Gen 4 NVMe instead of a Gen 5 because Gen 5 isn't supported. So it'll actually just get capped down to Gen 4 speeds. So whilst Gen 5 speeds look really cool, they're not going to work. It's just going to perform like a Gen 4, so just buy a Gen 4. Now, I highly recommend the WD Black SN7100 because these are really, really efficient, like crazily power efficient. You'll be saving battery life and temperatures, and they're still super fast. That's what I'm using today in this video. And I recommend that you get the biggest size capacity that you can afford because SSD prices are skyrocketing now, and they're just going up and up and up because of all this AI stuff, right? And you don't wanna be doing this process more than once, so just get the biggest size that you can afford now. Now, I preemptively bought a bunch of different size thermal pads just in case, and I'm actually glad because I did need them, so I recommend you go and purchase these. I've linked the ones that I bought down in the description, and they are super cheap. Now, if you're wanting to do the clone method, as we're covering in this video, you will need two M.2 enclosures or a dual M.2 cloning station, but now, I'm broke because I've bought all this Lenovo Legion Go 2 stuff. We're gonna go down the route of cheap budget USB enclosures. So that's exactly what I've done and these actually worked perfect. Now if you're going down the recovery media method instead of cloning then you will need a fast USB drive. And I'll just quickly talk you through this now because it's really really simple. Use the link in the description, I will link Lenovo's official recovery image bit, right? All you need to do is get your serial number from your box or from your device underneath the kickstand, I think it is where it's found. Type that in and then you will be able to download for free the recovery image image. Start that app up, have your USB plugged into your PC and just follow the steps and it will write the image onto your USB and then you can skip down later into the video, but you still wanna see how to remove the old drive and stuff. I'll walk you through it. Now it's time to crack open the system. Now I highly recommend that you watch this video a few times first, just so that you're very comfortable with all of this. I wouldn't recommend step-by-step -step doing it as I'm doing it. Get it into your head first, kind of prepare yourself for bits that look tough and that I recommend you, that you pay attention to, and then do it yourself. So ensure your system is completely powered down. So just go to shut down and shut it down. Take your controllers off and set them aside. And we're just gonna be working on the tablet alone. On the back, there's six screws that you need to remove. Three on the left and three on the right. So take those out first. But now I can ensure that you don't do what I almost did because I missed the extra two screws underneath the kickstand. Do not miss these because I very almost nearly broke things by forcing it. Do not force it. Take those extra two screws out. These are the super deep ones that you're gonna need a longer head for. Now all eight screws have been removed, find your thinnest spudger and gently pry it into any gap that you can find and just gently pry it upwards. The back is clipped in, so we need to be very gentle, otherwise you will snap the clips. Everything about this process is super gentle, no force required anywhere. Once your spudger is in, gently rotate it to the right, or to the left, depending on if you're right or left-handed, 
to release those clips and then just slowly move along the outer edge all the way round until all those clips are unclipped and then the back will come away entirely easily. Now gently lift the battery connector straight upwards to disconnect it. There's now two screws holding the battery in place so we need to remove those first. There's one on either side towards the top of the fan and once those are out the whole battery will just simply lift up and be removed entirely. It's actually very easy. Do not bend the battery, be very careful with it. Now we're going to remove the fan and watch this before attempting as there's a very delicate cable attached that we will not be disconnecting because it's too much of a faff. So we're going to leave it connected. So there's one screw holding the fan in place on the lower right where my finger is pointing to here. Remove that and then gently lift the fan up and rotate it to the right, like flipping it over to the right so that you leave that cable connected. You will see it, gently rest it on the side of the chassis. Now we can access the M.2 slot. So if you've bought a two terabyte version, you'll already have a 2280 drive in there already installed, but I highly doubt that you're doing this if you've got a two terabyte in there anyway, right? So you likely have a one terabyte or a 512 gigabyte. So you will have a 2242 size drive installed like me. Remove the screw holding the drive in place. Remove the plastic holder the screw was installed to. We no longer actually need this. Once removed, the SSD will just simply lift up. So just gently remove it, pulling it to the right hand side. Now, if you're doing the USB recovery image method, well then skip to where I'm installing the new drive because I'm now going to be explaining cloning. But for those of you doing the cloning method like me, we're going to get both of our drives, install them into our USB enclosures and then head to another PC. Plug them both in. The Legion's SSD will show up as a drive because it already is one, right? It's already basically its own computer. So just ignore this for now, but your new drive will likely be uninitialized. So we need to turn this into a usable volume first in the Windows search, type in disk management. Here you'll see the unallocated drive and this will obviously be your new one. Now ignore the fact that mine says two terabyte here. I actually recorded all this for my four terabyte drive, but then I accidentally deleted the video. So I had to refilm all this with another drive so that you can follow along. So right click on your drive and click new simple volume, ensure the sizes match up and click next. Just leave it whilst it formats. Mine asked me to format it, but I knew it was already doing this in the background. So just ignore a pop-up window if it's asking again that you want to format it, just, just close that down. The drive will then pop up once it's done and now show in Device Manager that it's now a healthy drive. Now we need to download and install Macrium Reflect. Now you can sign up for a free trial. That's all I did. No bank cards required or anything. Just go through the process and download this software. You get 30 days to use it and then it will like, you know, conk out. So this is the cloning software tool that we'll be using. So here we will see the original Legion Go 2 drive and our new empty one. On the old drive, hover over it on the bottom left and you'll see clone this drive. Click that and then select your new drive. Now this step is incredibly important, so pay attention. You must select copy partitions on the left hand side and select shrink or extend to fill the target disk. If you do not do this, then your new drive will only be as big as the original. So if I did it on my four terabyte drive, it would actually only end up being a 512 gigabyte drive, right? So I don't want that. So make sure you do this step. If you've done this right, you'll see the new drive has a much larger capacity versus the original drive. And now you're ready to hit next a few times and just just leave it to do its cloning process. Now I actually cloned my drive whilst there was nothing on it. So I got my Legion Go 2, I booted into Windows and all that good stuff and I basically cleaned up Windows, uninstalled loads of unnecessary stuff. If you want tips and tricks there's going to be more videos coming so make sure you subscribe right. But I have a very lightweight Windows that I was cloning so for me it only took eight minutes. However if you've already got your Legion Go 2 set up. Maybe you're doing this process after like a year of having it or something. I don't know when you're watching this video, right? And you've already got loads of stuff on your original drive. This might take ages. It also comes down to the, the enclosures that you're using. It might be slow ones and also the USB ports that you're plugging into your PC. So just leave it to do its business. It might take a couple of hours. It was only eight minutes for me. 
Now once we're done, we're back to the Legion Go 2 to reassemble it. So if you're doing the USB method, you can continue here. So take your new drive and slot it into the M.2 slot. Get your screw that you removed prior and install it into the new holder at the end. If you're using a 2280, you will see where to screw that in. Now I flipped the fan back into place momentarily to see if the pre-installed thermal pads would connect to my new drive, which they didn't. There was a bit of a gap there and that's because the WD black SN7100 is super thin. That's the SSD I'm using. So this is where my random sizes of different 2280 thermal pads came into play. I was required to use the thickest pad I had. So I removed the old pads from the heat sink at the base of the fan and then I installed my new thicker thermal pad here. Just bear in mind if you're new to all this that new thermal pads usually have plastic on both sides. So ensure you remove that plastic on both sides first to reveal sticky sides on both sides. Then I flipped the fan back into place and gently pressed down onto the SSD area to ensure that that thermal pad had made connection with my new drive. Replace the screw in the bottom right, holding the fan back into place. And now that cable that was still left in is probably in the wrong place. So just gently move it out of the way wherever you see fit because we're going to need the battery to slide back in and we don't want to damage that cable. My little cable actually moved out when I was maneuvering that fan. So I ended up tucking it in where I could as close to the fan as possible to leave that battery bay completely vacant. Now carefully replace the battery and then replace the two screws, one on either side towards the top. Now we replace that battery connector. So just carefully line it up vertically and then gently and evenly press down until it is fully connected. Take your time with this. This is fragile and make sure it's fully seated. Otherwise we won't be getting a boot. Now take your back plate, gently press it into place, push all the way around and sort of give it a bit of a wiggle to make sure that those little clips are fully attached all the way around it. Now you can start replacing those eight screws, the two underneath the kickstand and then the three on either side. Now you can reattach your controllers, plug your system into power using your 65 watt charger it came with. And then if you've installed the battery connector correctly, you will see a white power LED next to the USB port on the top where you just plugged your charger into. Now, if you're using the cloning method, just simply press the power button and wait. This takes about five minutes, maybe a little bit more. Just be patient, just wait. And that's it, now it's booting, right? And we can go to my computer to see your new drive is the C drive and all that space you now have. Now, if you're using the USB method, you're not done yet. Get your USB drive and plug it into the bottom port or the other USB port that you're not using. Press the volume up and hold it. Press the power button and then let go, but keep holding the volume up button until you get to like a little boot screen. You're like on the BIOS menu, right? And now you want to select boot menu. Select this and you should now see your drives and you should see your USB drive as an option. Just click on this and then follow the prompts and then eventually Windows and all that good stuff will be reinstalled for you. And that's it, well done, congratulations. You have successfully swapped out the drive on your Lenovo Legion Go 2. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Hopefully you found this video helpful. Let me know all your thoughts down in the uh, in the comment section. And of course, I'll be doing tips and tricks, performance and all that good stuff. And so many more videos on the Legion Go 2 and loads of other handhelds as well on this channel. So make sure you subscribe. And if you'd like to support us, become a member and you can talk to us over on our private Discord. Thanks for watching and enjoy your Legion Go 2. Bye.